It's October. Come on, lay it on me. I'm ready. Get out the Draculas. The Frankensteins. The skeletons with the gun in their hands. Uh, wait, hold on a sec. Maybe scratch that last one. Yeah, I don't think that's a thing. Don't forget about the Scissor Man. <gasps> Not the Scissor Man. Well, I didn't realize you were going to go. Mm, Scissor Man! Please stop. Clock Tower. It's a series best known for the game released on the PlayStation 1, but it actually had its start in the SNES, which most people don't know because it was never released outside of Japan. I've always wanted to try it out, seeing as it is one of the earliest entries into the survival horror genre. Some would say this game pioneered survival horror, but can an SNES game elicit the same kind of terror we associate with such titles as Resident Evil and Silent Hill? Somehow, I doubt it. Clock towel? That's not very scary. Oh god! Raised in the granite orphanage, Jennifer and her friend friend Z? Ooh, typos, already getting scary. Were wanted as adopted daughters. Guess I'd like to adopt the two of them like puppies from a kennel, after all. Anything can be bought and sold for the right oil. It happened in September. A uh, bit of a missed opportunity, if I'm saying so myself. I mean, the, the scary months just won over. <laughs> oh, that's the one! From now on, what kind of place will we be living in? That's the fifth time you've asked. Yeah, well, maybe it'd be the last time if you just f told me. Don't worry, it's a very nice place. We're almost there, see? Oh, majestic! Yeah, you know, all that's missing, I think, is just a big old sign saying definitely not haunted. I, I think that'll be an amazing touch. In Clock Tower, you play as Jennifer Simpson, an orphan girl who has just been adopted by a Mr. Barrows. The story picks up as you've just been brought to his secluded and creepy mansion in the woods. I gotta go get Mr. Barrows. Everyone wait here. You think you can maybe give me an ETA on that? Man, this game sure is off to a slow start. Oh no! That can't be good. A musical change like that can only mean one thing. I gotta get out of here. I ain't gonna be the first to die, I'll tell you that much right now. Ah, locked doors, huh? Well, I don't know where to go. Oh, wonderful, the lights went out. Okay, well, I don't know. I guess I'll just try to go up these stairs. Even though it's gonna take my entire life. Okay, yeah, there's nothing up here. Oh, look at that, turn the lights back on. Yeah, it's almost like we got somewhere. I have to say, for this era of gaming, there really was nothing with this kind of intense atmosphere. Most horror competitors at the time were just platformers or action games that had spooky themes. Nothing quite got to this level. <laughs> eh, what was that? Well, I better hurry and see who just made that blood-curdling scream. Oh no, I was too late. Maybe I should've ran. The game works on a cursor system. It's basically like a point-and-click adventure. I eventually found out that if you double tap, she starts to run, which is nice, because otherwise I'd be walking everywhere like that. As you walk around the mansion, crazy events can happen at random, which keeps the tension high. Whoa! Okay! Guess I'm glad I was walking this time. Honestly, the lack of a direct input on your character helps add to the feeling of helplessness. It's pretty cool. Oh yes, there's nothing like a portrait of a skull with no eyes to really bring a home together. This is actually a uh, original Vincent Van Gogh. People don't come over anymore. The game also brings itself to life by showing really detailed close-ups of the items you find. Like look at this broken picture of these two kids, the artwork is fantastic. So much terror is portrayed through this angle and lighting, especially for 16-bit graphics, it's genuinely creepy. Well, just because I'm being haunted doesn't mean I can't be beautiful. I'm being strangled by the man in the mirror. Ah! At least he had the decency to be delicate, you know what I'm saying? Like some ghosts nowadays, too busy to, to float an old lady across the street. I'm sorry, I, I don't think I can get over this yet. He spins her around and gently pushes her after he's done strangling her. And she just daintily falls. 
What even? Well, fine. If you're not going to be nice, I'll just have myself a refreshing talk with the bird. Oh, God. No. Hey, please, stop. Are you talking to me? Are you saying something? I kiss you. I kiss you. I'm near you. I'll kill you. Not now, Jacques. I'm trying to figure this out. Ah, you messed me up. Dead from lack of addiction. I'm getting a bit sick of these dead ends. I just want the plot to progress already. Scissorman! You know, I'm having second thoughts about this adoption. I think I'll give you guys a call. Oh my god, I am out of here! But then again, that did look like a bit like Angus Young. But then again, his signature doesn't mean anything if I'm dead! But, you know, I'm a huge ACDC fan, so I think I'm gonna check one more time just to make sure it wasn't him. What is this person? Is this actually the main enemy of the game? After all this time, all this atmosphere, and our nemesis turns out to be Jay Leno on a schoolboy's body with a serious case of moldy prune face? And what's he using as a weapon exactly? That, that, that's hedge clippers. We, we're not getting around this. Jason had a machete. Freddy had a creepy claw hand. Scissor man? He's got scissors. That's it, that's the end, that's where it ends. Edward Scissor Hands, this is Edward Scissor Man. Uh, uh, what do I do? Uh, I, I better grab that shovel. No, wait, get in the car and get out of here. No, even better, I'll hide up here. <laughs> Ain't no way his stubby legs are climbing up this ladder. <laughs> that's right, see you later, buddy. I did not factor in the warp ability. All right. Let's try this again. This time, going straight for the car. No messing around. The upstairs? Okay, bad idea. I can see that now. Car, made of steel. Let's go. But... the others... As silly as he is, after Scissorman hits the scene, this game becomes ten times as scary. Every room becomes a trap. Every object becomes a game of deadly trial and error. He can appear literally anywhere at any time, so you better be careful because game over is back to the beginning like it is with these old games. That's almost scarier than the monsters. Other random things can happen too. Okay, well, this is unfortunate. Now I gotta play the rest of the game as pig pun, pig pen for the, for the peanuts. Picked up some ham. This'll kill him. It's a swimming pool. Actually, that's a window. Ah, hole in the floor. We meet again. I guess I'll just put this simple wood plank over the top of it. Just a simple plank of wood. Who are you to judge? With everything this game does right, it still suffers from a lot of hiccups that old point-and-click adventures do. For instance, like when you think you figured out the solution to a puzzle, but the game has decided that that is not the way the puzzle is going to be solved. Which, of course, leads to you having to backtrack and put a piece of ham in your pocket or something. Just some obscure, tiny object that you paid no mind to. All the way on the other side of the map is the key to progressing. Wouldn't it be funny if someone were, like, hiding behind the drapes like it was a horror movie or something? <laughs> All right! Really? There! Scissorman, what, what are you, f***ing seven? Actually, I think you are, actually you are seven, aren't you? All right, checks out. Okay, well, maybe I'll just see what's behind these drapes. It couldn't be worse than that nightmare-inducing <laughs> So can I start therapy now, or should I wait for the nightmares to set in? Eventually, you get to the top of the clock tower and find out that Dan Scissorman, yeah, yes, by the way, his name actually is Dan, really hates the sound of tower bells, uh, for some reason. Listen, even if you don't like the sound of bells, that was just a very poor route to take. Also, this lady backs off a cliff because some birds are bothering her. Yeah, that's a story, folks. Remember that powerful scene from Star Wars where Emperor Palpatine backed off into the nebulous void because he was annoyed with some birds? I still cry. Listen, next time, you're getting adopted. I'm dead inside forever now. <laughs> Man, I mean, that was so enveloping. I almost believed it was real, but it's all in the spirit of the holiday. I mean, it's good to sit back and remember that scissors don't actually exist. Oh, wait a second. What's this? But that's impossible. If scissors don't exist, how did someone clip out this article? It can't be.
Oh no, that's all I had! Come on, John. Think! 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 I got it! Ham! The harbinger of gout! And a scissorman's worst friend. Looks like you're out to lunch. <laughs> Wait a second. Why do I have a gun holster? I don't have a gun. I got a bone to pick with you! <laughs> People that haven't come over in, in several years. That was the last man and he's dead now.